What is going down my YouTube family? It is an awesome day here in the XMG. Three videos, two noob series, and one is on a brand new character coming to the game, Rin the Unseen. Before we get into Rin the Unseen, if you are not part of the XMG family, become part of the XMG family. Click that subscribe button. 57% of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed. Shooting for that goal of 650 subscribers for the giveaway to happen. If you're unsure of the giveaway, card up here now. Click on that. Check it out so you know what you got to do to enter. Turn on notifications, like the videos, leave me comments, share them, all that crap that goes along with it. I am super pumped to get into Rin the Unseen. Here we go. All right, we have Rin the Unseen. She is an Order Panda tactician and a rogue. Really cool character. I like what she can do. So let's take a look at her stats. Rin the Unseen does physical damage. She already has extremely high physical damage to start at 3144. Critical chance is at 27.58. A little bit above average. Her health is at 20,084. Definitely subpar. Physical armor is at 32% and magic armor, let's say 31%. Shield is at 20,888. Her shield and health combination are atrocious. So yeah. Her speed is a very good 155. Potency is a scary 1%. Tenacity, 25%. What did we learn from this badass panda based off her stats? We learned her health and shield combination are just atrocious. Her survivability isn't even to 45,000 to start. Physical armor and magical armor are right on par. Physical damage is extremely good. Speed is also very good. Potency blows. So let's see if she needs any of that stuff to maximize her move kit. First ability is Kunai. Flings three Kunai at enemy, dealing 100% of physical damage. So she has a mini AoE on her basic, where we need physical damage. Fan of Blades deals 150% of physical damage to all enemies. If this ability kills an enemy, it instantly refreshes and she gains 50% turn meter. Awesome move. All we need is physical damage. Reflective Strikes. Rin the Unseen gains a counterattack and damage increase for two turns, recovers 50% of her turn meter. Awesome. Again, we just see she's increasing her damage increasing her counter chance and gaining turn meter awesome move overall love it and house of the shadow technique her passive ability is that she gains 15 percent physical damage increase and then an additional three percent for each living panda in the party so she's just giving herself more damage you pair her with pandas and she's doing even more damage so what did we learn from her move kit she needs physical damage. She's feeding herself turn meter, so speed essentially might not be as important as we think, but we'll have to we'll have to mess around with that. Good thing she doesn't need potency because it's only at 1%, but she does nothing to really help increase her survivability. So taking that into f account, how can we ruin this character to maximize her abilities? There's a bunch of ways. You could go damage with a critical chance set. You could go damage with a health set. You could go damage with a armor set. Damage with a tenacity set. You could go speed with health or critical chance. You could go all health with a critical chance. But the way I am going to ruin her is I really want her to be just the DPS monster to pair with Ember. In a panda team which at the end of the video i will show have a video of a kinley lead patriarchy lake rin the unseen and ember and it, they just smoke people so that is very cool so we will check that out but i am going to go with damage and health now i considered and i played around with the critical chance and if you want to go that route definitely viable but I just wanted her to get a little more survivability 
because when those AoEs start to fly, she does fold bad. I mean, she is worse than Snorri. So I will rune her, and I will be right back. Okay, we are back full rune amulet. I went with damage, damage, and more damage. For secondary stats, I'm looking for anything survivability, speed, critical chance, and damage. Not worried about tenacity, not worried about potency. So here we go. The northern rune, I did damage, critical chance, speed, health, and armor. The northeastern rune, I gave up the speed to go damage because she feeds herself turn meter. So I'm not too concerned about that. She does have a higher base speed of 155. So in this build, I went straight damage. So I went damage, armor, damage again, speed, and shield. And then the north, the southeastern rune, I went with armor, of course. Speed, damage, damage, and health. In the southern rune, I went damage. Now you could go critical chance here, but I just wanted to do the most damage I possibly could. Shield, damage, shield, and critical chance. On the southwestern rune, now the main stat here for me didn't matter. Because shield is great for her and health is great for her. You want to worry about what is the best secondary stats you can find. And on this one, I found critical chance, armor, damage hit twice, and some speed. Then in the northwestern rune, I went with damage. I hit with damage, shield, armor, and more speed. So let's take a look and see what we did to her overall stats. Okay, her stats, her physical damage, we brought up 903, so it is now over 4,000. Really happy about that. Her critical chance, we brought up 2.75%, so it's still pretty low at 30.33, but I'm okay with that. Her health, we brought up 2,248, bringing it to 22,332. Physical armor and magical armor up about 1.5% apiece. Her shield, we brought up 3,725 to 24,613. So this puts us about 3,500 below that 50,000 mark of what we kind of wanted to shoot for, but it's way better than what it was. We gave her 15 speed based off of just secondaries, getting her to a very respectable 170. 170 is nothing to scoff at. And you will kind of see in that video later. And we didn't touch anything else. So I am really happy with what I went for. Now you could go for a speed build and just make her go all the time and have her be crazy. And that's fine. But I wanted to do just straight damage with her, with her counter chances, with her AoEs. And especially if she kills somebody on that AoE, 50% turn meter and it refreshes, she can be devastating. So that's why I wanted the more damage. But again, you would not be in the wrong for going speed. You would not be in the wrong for stacking critical chance and critical damage at all. So how are we going to scroll sync Rin the Unseen? So everything is at level 2. Her kunai ability flings 3 at the enemies, dealing 65% damage. Her fan of blades at level 2, she deals 80% of physical damage to all enemies. At level 5, we get the instant refresh, and at level 6, she's feeding that turn meter. Her third ability, Reflective Strikes, at level 2, she gains counterattack for 2 turns. Then she gains a damage increase for 1, damage increase for 2, and then starts recovering her turn meter. Her passive ability, House of Shadows Technique, Rin the Unseen gains 6% physical damage increase, and then it goes up and up until we get for each living panda at level six so the way i'm going to scroll sync her is i'm going to leave her passive to last right at level two we are getting a six percent increase and i'm fine with that so we're just going to leave that to start there we are going to start rin the unseen with her reflective strikes and what we are going to do with that is we're going to take it to level four we're not going to be getting the turn meter boost from it right away but we are going to get the damage increase and the counter chance for two turns. Then we are going to come to Fan of Blades and we're going to take this right to level 6. More damage, refleshes instantly, and the 50% turn meter gain. Then we are going to Kunai 
and at level 2, she's dealing 65%. We're going to take this right to level 6. Okay? So we have her fan of blades at level 6 and her basic at level 6. Then we are going to come back to her reflective strikes, take that to level 6, gaining the turn meter. Then we're just going to polish it off by giving her more physical damage as we go, taking House of Shadows technique to level 6. So everybody, that's how I do it for Rin the Unseen. She is just a DPS glass cannon perfection. I really like her, really like what she brings to the game in a panda faction. I haven't had time to test her with anybody else, so I can't really comment on that. But she really does help speed up battles for sure with the pandas. Before, the pandas seemed to be more of a steady over time, burn them down slowly. With the addition of Ember first, and now Rin the Unseen, the pandas can pump out some damage, and they have some survivability for sure. So again, everybody, thank you so much for the overwhelming support. Thank you for making my hobby become what it is. So if you're not part of that XMG family, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Don't forget to join the giveaway. Just a token of my appreciation for what everyone does for me out there. So I love y'all. I hope you're enjoying this battle. See you in the next one. My voice is shot. I'm out.